Hi guys, I thought it would be easier if I went ahead and did the word tracks that they should be performing for this word track contest. I thought it'd be easier if I just gave you an example of how they should be done correctly and that way you've got an idea of how well they do and you can kind of compare it and that way it'd be easier for you to grade. So the first one was the greeting and we just would start off with, hey, welcome to Sexton Ford. My name's Chris and you are? Hey, good to meet you, Bill. What kind of information can I help you with today? The second one that I've got them learning or that they've learned is, there's two I want to think about it. So the one is prior to them working figures. And the idea there is to get them to get the customer to come in and work figures because after all, if the customers don't have the math, if they don't have the pricing information, it's hard for them to make a decision. And then you guys are going to close them when they get in there. So it would just go like this. It would be, well, you know, of course you need to think about it. I haven't given you enough information not to think about it. What I'd like to do is go ahead and get your proposal of all the figures, and that way when you go home tonight to think about it, you've got all the information you need to make a good informed decision. Fair enough? Okay, well, do you want a pop board or coffee? And I'll get that process started. And then they would go ahead and get the figures, and then you guys aren't going to let them leave. You're going to close them when they're in the office. However, obviously we need to, to, get, them to, the, to, to get to the figure part. The other one I call the universal I want to think about it. I don't think it's the best I want to think about it. I just think it's easier to use it in any situation. Now, I've given them a bunch I want to think about it. Um, one I gave them was the 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. So I did give them on a scale of 1 to 10 with 1 being that you would not take the vehicle if I gave it to you and 10 being that you're ready to do it now. Where do you sit right now? Oh, a 7? What would make it a 9 or a 10? And so that's just a kind of open-ended to get the customer to give you what the objection is. Now, that's one of the ones that I told them they didn't have to memorize. However, you might hear some of the guys performing those in the work, in the work track contest. Another one I give them is, do you think a day or two be long enough or would five or six days be better? Well, the facts are, Bill, whether you take a day or two or five days or five months, you're still going to be faced with the same three questions. And that is, is this the vehicle that you guys like? Is this a vehicle that you guys want? And I'd have them write this out and you'd check that off. Am I in the dealership place you'd want to go ahead and do business with? And then lastly, does it fit into your budget? And then I taught them if it's budget to just say, well, hey, great. You know what? Now we can move to the, the final phase of at least my part. And that is I'm going to go ahead and write everything up. And then I'm going to take it to one of our two business managers who've got a ton of experience. They've been doing this for a while. And they work with over 20 different local and national lenders. So I'm confident they'll find a way to be able to fit this into your budget. Do you guys Are you going to title it in your name, Bill? Or are you going to title it in both names? And then they'd move on. Now that's another one, and then the one that you're going to hear most of them use is, well, you know, help me out here a sec before you guys take off. What is it exactly that you need to think about? Is it something I said? Color equipment or is it the price of the vehicle? Oh, the price? Well, it sounds you're like me and everyone else. Sounds like you're on a budget, am I right? So if we went inside and we looked at everything and we found a way to fit this into your budget, do you see any reason you wouldn't take it now? And then you'd go on and you'd proceed. So that could be done in the office if we sat back down and took a look and found a way to fit it into your budget. It could be done outside prior to working figures. Um, again, it could be used in a lot of situations. So that's the reason I call it the universal. I want to think about it. And what you're doing is you're taking price and you're turning it into budget. And then we can get them written up and get the business office involved and get the payments to, to fit their budget. Uh, the other one they're working on, bypassing payments. So I kind of did that with you. They can use that part as a close after they've found a budget customer and they're going to go ahead and try to write them up. They can use that part I did about, hey, the experienced business managers. But if they're on the lot and they wanted to bypass payment and the customer said something like, well, you know, what do you think payments will run on this? I won't hold you to it. And they would just say, you know what, there's so much information and so many factors involved to generate a payment. I just don't know. But here's the good news. We've got two experienced business managers that work with over 20 different local and national lenders. So I'm confident they'll find a way to fit this in your budget. Now, speaking of payments, a lot of that's going to come down on how you equip the vehicle. So we're going to look at doing the XLT model, or maybe you're going to move up to the platinum model. And so then they would overcome that and, and, and bypass basically payment on the lot. They can do the same thing with price, trade, and interest rate. Uh, let's see, demo, so they don't have time to take a demo drive. Hey, that's okay, no time to take a demo drive? That's okay, we'll just take the short route, follow me, it'll only take a few minutes. So they just move to a short route. 
And then the dreaded, I just drove one at another dealership, I don't need to drive yours. Gosh, you know what? If you already driven that vehicle and you didn't purchase it, that concerns me. You know that salesperson you talked to? They must not have told you everything about the vehicle. Let me show you a couple things they must not have told you about, things I think you're really gonna love. It only takes a couple minutes. Come on, follow me. And then you take them outside, start your walk around and get them in the car and take it for a drive. The trial close after you come back from a demonstration drive and you just simply say as you're coming through the threshold of the dealership or the hump there where you come over the curb to the dealership, you could just say something like, hey, if this is the car for you, Bill, go ahead and park it up front. If not, just park it over there and we'll pick something else out. So it's kind of an either or action close. The, what else we got? The advanced ad credit that you've heard them use. And that's what I call little number close. So that's to, if you get that guy that just has to have a discount or it's a way to kind of counter and anchor a little bit lower and it just goes like this. It, it would at the proper moment in the negotiation and say, Bill, I, I get that you would like to get an additional discount. And as we've discussed, these vehicles have been pre-discounted. Now all that aside, here's an idea. In our sales meeting last week, my manager said, on average, we spend $212 in advertising just to get a guest in the show. Now, the rather than us have to spend the money to put another guest in your seat to look at your car, what if I was able to go ahead and get my manager to advance us that $212 in advertising as like a credit? If I could get him to do something like that, do you see any reason why you wouldn't take it now? And then you'd obviously lock it down and, and go ahead and write it up as a deal and make a commitment off of that. The next one is I'm just looking. So that would just go, Bill, you know what? If you're, if you're in just the looking... So he says, hey, Chris, I'm just looking. You say, you know what? That actually might be a good thing. Because if you're in just in the looking stage, I'm going to guess that you probably don't have to do this really quickly and you've got some flexibility in your shopping timeline. Am I right? Well, you know what? That flexibility actually allows us to explore a few more things and look at a few more options. Now, that being said, if you do end up finding a vehicle you like, you like the deal and you like the way you're treated, I promise I won't stop you from taking one home today. Fair enough? Seriously, you know what? We'll just take this one step at a time. And then you'd move forward. The um, market-based pricing explanation. I think you guys have heard me do that one, but I'll just do it real quick. And it can be done at any time. Um, I suggest possibly doing it right before you're working figures, like if you guys are on appraisal. However, they've got to do it obviously before you work figures, so it could happen on the lot. So usually it just kind of goes, you know, Bill, there's been a lot of changes in the car business the last five to ten years. Can I ask, when was the last time you bought a car? And did you have to do a lot of negotiating to get a discount? Well, the good news is you won't have to do a lot of that here. Bill, real quick, while we're with my managers to get done appraising your vehicle, are you familiar with market-based pricing and the third-party software that goes with it? Well, yeah, market-based pricing is just simply a third-party software system that searches the marketplace for the exact same new and used vehicles and then compares the prices. In fact, it's kind of the same third-party software that you're used to because it's pretty much now everywhere. For instance, when was the last time that you went and bought milk at the grocery store? That milk you bought at Hy-V, it was market-based price. Hy-V looked at their supply and demand, their weekly goals, and then they went and searched the marketplace and saw what some of the other grocery stores were charging for milk, and they priced it accordingly. Amazon, airlines, hotels.com, all those types of places, they use a third-party market-based pricing. In fact, I bet you a little shopping for cars before you came in here today. Am I wrong? And Bill, would you even have bothered to stop in if we were priced way higher than everyone else? And that's just it. We had to have our car price right for you or anyone else to even come in and take a look at it, let alone take one home. So that's why we've pre-discounted most all of our used vehicles and all of our new as well. And again, I've taught these guys to say most of our new or, uh, excuse me, I've taught them to say are used because obviously you guys don't pre-discount your new vehicles other than the demonstrators. So I've said, hey, you got to be smart. You can't say uh, we've pre-discounted all of our vehicles. You'd have to say used. So anyway, just they, they customize that to the end for you guys. And then the last one is they're doing one that I call the Mannheim Auction Report. So that one just goes like this. It's a trade objection. And so you just so folks, I understand you'd like to get more for your trade. And in fact, I, I'd be doing the same thing if I was in your spot. Let me show you though real quick how we arrived at the value for our vehicle. Are you familiar with the Mannheim Auction? 
Well, it's one of the major auctions that is around for the for the United States of America for the automotive business. And we'll go to some of them in the major metropolitan areas, but typically we do a lot of them online. And because we do them online, we have access to their auction records. So what our management team does is they go and look and see what they could purchase a vehicle like yours from, from the auction. In fact, you would probably do the same thing if you had access to that type of, of records. So the first thing they do is they go in and enter a 17-digit VIN number. So I have them write this down. Now that goes ahead and makes sure that we've got the same year, make, model, and it looks at the trim package. Now the second thing they do is they enter in the exact miles. Because obviously fluctuations of sometimes even a thousand miles can make a difference. And then lastly, they enter in the condition. Now speaking of condition, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest, what would you rank your vehicle? Well, that's right around where we ranked it at, too. So now after they enter all this information into the auction website, what it did was it produced some vehicles that they could purchase, like yours, at the auction with an 8 rating. And the, the price it gave us for a vehicle like yours was right at about twelve five, which is about 500 less than we're offering for yours. Now, your vehicle, it's here. You're purchasing a vehicle from us. We don't have to go to the auction. So we felt that it was, it was the right thing to do to step up a little bit on that vehicle. But unless I'm missing something, this is the fair market value for your vehicle. So, Bill, I know you love the vehicle. What do you say we put all this shopping behind you and get you out of here so you can wrap this thing up? Do you want to get a pop water or coffee while we do the rest of the paperwork? And then they just go ahead and write them up. So that's how they should be saying the word tracks. Now, I know I went a little bit quicker. Maybe didn't put all the tone and voice and fluctuation that you normally would put in there because I was just trying to rattle them off. But I want you guys to have a basis on how they should be set. Okay, there you go. Let me know who you think's the winner. Judge it on a scale of 1 to 10. Obviously, 10 being the highest. Go ahead and email me back. My hope is that I could get this information to them on, say, Thursday. It'd be nice for me to be able to come in Thursday and announce this. All right, thanks, guys.